Jetpack. Look at this. He's like doing a weird like kind of crouch jump. It kind of looks like he's trying to go to the bathroom or something. And he's firing rainbows out of his wrists or out of something, out of his palms. I guess when you go into deep space, it's best to arm yourself with the power of a Care Bear. What is happening in this game? <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we are hopping into the ZX Spectrum and VIC 20 classic known as Jetpack. The VIC 20, of course, is a Commodore 64 computer. I believe it was a cheaper version of the Commodore 64 uh, to get a more widespread audience. Don't quote me on that, though. ZX Spectrum we have played before. I've realized that in the past I often call it the ZX Spectrum, which is weird because I'm Canadian and I say Z, not Z. But for some reason, the ZX Spectrum seems more correct to me. ZX Spectrum feels weird, which is weird because I never say Z, so I don't know. Uh, it's the ZX Spectrum, though. It is uh, pretty much a British system. I mean, it existed in other parts of the world, but it was sort of more popular in England. But they also say Z, so a bit of world history for you there. Uh, let's go ahead and, without further ado, hop in, and I will just talk as I play. Although, actually, before I get into this, or actually, maybe I should just start playing, and I'm going to fumble a lot as I try to read my notes as I play here. This is a this is a platformer game where you take the role of this funky astronaut who's trying to get all the pieces of his ship back together. I don't know how his rocket ship landed in three neatly arranged pieces like this, but they they did. So you got to pick them up and kind of fly over and dump them off and wait for them to land. Oh, God. Uh, I don't know what is flying at me. I guess it's like asteroids or... Oh, I just died. There you go. Um, the point of this game is to basically float around to these different platform levels, pick up fuel, and dump it into your ship. And this is how you refuel a rocket ship. You just let a canister of fuel fall on it, um, and that does the refueling. We got our little... Uh, our little, like, rainbow laser here. He's not shooting a single color. He's shooting the power of love. It's a uh, purple, white, and cyan blue colored of love. <laughs> Just, like, the most random, unappealing colors ever. It's funny how, like, these old games really have, like, weird choices in the, the color palettes. But uh, this game has some of the weirdest controls I have ever encountered. So I have played my share of ZX Spectrum games, and they all kind of have, like, a really weird control layout. But I think this one takes the cake. So, okay, this might kill me, but I have to look at my nose for just a second here. We'll just have this guy, like, shooting left and right so that no asteroids sneak up on him. But in order to walk left, you press either Z, X, B, or M. Um, in order to walk right, you press, oh god, you press X, V, N, or the shift key. In order to fire, you have your pick of A, S, D, F, it says etc in the manual, or in the, the, the file I'm reading anyway. So A, S, D, F, etc. Literally any key on the second row of the keyboard will fire. Um, and in order to like hover, so let's see, this is hovering. Whoop, there we go. So I'm kind of like hovering in space. You can press one, two, three, or four, etc. Any number. What a weird set of controls. Like who thought of that? Like <laughs> it's almost as if they were like, well, we want to have this guy being able to like fly around the screen left and right and stuff, but like, you know, we don't want it, we don't want to constrain players into using our control scheme. So huzzah, we just passed the first level, we got our fuel, and we're in the slowest rocket ever. But it's almost like the developers weren't confident in their ability to assign keys. And they're like, well, we don't want to be like those jerk developers that really, like, force people into picking certain buttons. So really, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, minus, plus sign, backspace, any of those keys we will accept as a fire. And hey, we're good guys. Let's make A, S, D, F, G, uh, H, J, K, L, uh, semicolon, uh, single quote. Let's make any of those keys the jump or whatever the hell button it is. I actually am not playing this game uh, on the keyboard. I spent a bit of time to set up a controller uh, ahead of time so I could play, which it's actually a nightmare to get a controller to work, uh, you know, with with these really weird button mappings and so on. So anyway, anyway, we've graduated from killing uh, asteroids, so now we're killing, like, fluff balls that seem to have eyeballs or something. They take a few more shots than the asteroids, but once you start hitting them with your 
random laser here. Uh, they seem to pause, so they, they get stun locked, which is convenient. Um, now, apparently my rocket is still intact. It will stay intact for a couple of levels, which means all I really have to do for the next few levels is collect fuel. But every four levels, I believe the rocket falls into pieces again. Oh, what is that? It's like a Triforce. Oh, I got it. Oh, I'm in the danger zone. I'm in the danger zone. So one thing I've learned really rapidly about this game is you do not want to be on the ground. The ground is where you die. Uh, the top of my rocket looks green or red or something. I don't know what's going on with the colors in this game. But you kind of always want to be flying around. You have unlimited fuel, so why would you ever choose to be on the ground? It's like a death zone down there. Um, now, this was the first installment in the uh, in a series called Jetman, I believe. Oh, now we're fighting balls. Okay, we moved from rockets to like... They're not even like bouncing balls. They're kind of like floating bubbles. Oh, and a floating bubble took me out. Uh, my rocket is called the U1. <laughs> hey, wait, is that like, you won, like you won the game! My rocket is a very positive, positive mes message for me. You're already a winner just by playing the game. You won. I don't know why I had a weird accent for that, but sometimes I do weird accents because it feels right to me. I keep, I'm dying a lot here. I don't think I'm going to beat the balls. Uh, I've met my match. Bubbles. <laughs> Asteroids were no problem for this heroic astronaut. Neither were like weird fluff balls, but just normal balls. It's just too much. Game over, player one. We're straight up dead. And that's basically the game. So we're going to keep going, see if we can get past the balls, see what other terrors await us in the deep, dark recesses of space. I mean, like, where do you go from here? It's like asteroids. Asteroids seem like they should be more intimidating than balls. Like, we should start at the bubbles or balls or whatever the hell they are, and we should work our way up to asteroids. And then, like, the fluff balls, or the, like, what was it? It looked like dryer lint that was floating around, like space tumbleweeds, maybe? That's a good way to describe them? Whatever. Oh, pfft. Asteroid came out of, nowhere, out of nowhere and slammed me in the back of the head. But, like, in level two, when we fight those, like, tumbleweeds or whatever, I mean, those things, okay, whatever, early level thing. But, like, asteroids, really, asteroids is what you're leading with? I mean, it's the most space-appropriate thing, but it's also... Seems like you should hold on to it because you want asteroids to be the thing that damages you the most. Oh, man. Okay, so stay away from the bottom of the screen and the sides of the screen because I think I just died there because an asteroid just literally spawned right on top of me. And we got the radioactive thing. Doesn't really do anything. These power-ups, they're, they're interesting because like they're giving you different power-ups. It's like, oh, a radiation symbol, a gem. You have a space gem. You can take that back to your space wife and space propose for space marriage. You know, like, we're getting, like, random power-ups, but they don't do anything. It's not like, oh, you have the gem power-up. Well, that unlocks, you know, uh, triangles instead of bubbles, or, you know, a rocket beam instead of a, just a non-stop laser beam. Yeah, there's literally no reason in this game to not be shooting. This game is kind of like Contra in that, like, there's no reason in Contra to ever take your finger off that shoot button, unless, like, your finger's getting tired. Like, that's literally the only reason. In this game, there's no reason to hang around at the bottom of the screen, and there is no reason to not be shooting, because shooting just protects you. Um, you. You know, you never see that in real combat. You never see, like, people really just running into combat with their finger on the trigger shooting infinitely. Maybe one day when we have laser guns, people will do that. I feel like even still they wouldn't because of collateral damage. But in video games, there's no such thing as collateral damage. Um, if anything, you want collateral damage. What they really need to do in real life is figure out how to turn, like, friendly fire off. And then you could run into combat with, like, a laser gun that had infinite ammo just shooting to your heart's content. Then maybe you'll see that happen. I'm sure before we reach that point, there'll be drones doing all this stuff and, uh... And war, anyway, is, is pretty terrible. Let's not let's not glamorize or encourage war. I mean, it would hopefully we'll be at a point when we have that technology that we're not sending people into war to kill each other. So it won't even be an issue. It'd be a non-issue. It'd be like, oh, remember when we used to fight each other? Be like, yeah, that was quaint. Now we just play games and read stories about it happening because there's there's we have world peace now. World peace. We can all play our games in peace together, just like we're doing today, guys. Um, <laughs> now this this uh. I wonder what the backstory is for this dude. Like, like where is he, first of all? I don't know if the manual ever explains it. Maybe it does. I, I don't always read a lot of the, the backstories in, uh, in all the manuals for games I play. But, like, where is he, first of all? What are these extra power-ups? And, like, why is fuel just randomly spawning? Is it a thing, like, if you got lost in space in the 80s, that fuel would randomly spawn to try and get you home? Like, the universe had your back. It's like, don't worry, buddy. We got you. You had fuel. 
The universe is your gas station. We're just gonna drop fuel until until you get enough and then you can get out of here. But like our guy isn't taking a hint. It's not like he's got the fuel and he's like, huzzah, I can go home now. He's like, oh, yay, I can get in my rocket ship and fly like 20 feet and oh, I, I guess I'll just land over here where there's bubbles. Because that seems like a good idea. A wise move for the intrepid spacemans. Alright, let's see if we can actually pass this bubble stuff. Oh, get away from me, green bubble. That green bubble is trying to kill me. So is this one. Oh, God. Oh, that I meant to go right, not left, but that saved my bacon. All right. And uh, my bacon needs saving. <laughs> I was recently talking to someone about Egos. You know that slogan, Lego my Ego? Um, as a kid, I never really thought about it. <laughs> like, doesn't it sound totally like innuendo? Like, I came to mind just now because we're talking about saving my bacon. And, you know, there's some innuendo in there, I guess, if you have a dirty mind like I do sometimes. But, like, Lego my ego, in the, if you didn't know what an ego was, it might sound like it's someone grabbing you in an inappropriate place. It's like, hey, let go of that. You're not supposed to grab me there. It's like, hey, Lego my ego. That's not for grabbing. It's like... Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm i I'm shocked, actually, that as kids, we didn't, like, actually turn that into a thing and make more jokes about that. Because it was ripe for it. It was ripe. But I guess we had we had, had other things on our mind as children. Children are known for not making dirty jokes and not being crude or crass, of course. Um, just kidding. That's all we did as children. As children, we played video games and we made inappropriate jokes. And we laughed at stupid things like burps and, I don't know, farts and whatever things kids laugh at, you know. Um, and uh, <laughs> I talk about it as if it's some distant memory. Um... I'm not that evolved past that point, guys. <laughs> Alright, so this game, by the way. Hey, you may know the developers of this game. Oh, what do we got now? Wait, what? what is this? Like, little drones? Are we fighting drones or birds? I think they're supposed to be space birds. They kind of look like drones to me, though. Look at that blue one on the left side. He's just kind of constantly going left and right. Crap! We died. No! I wanted to see what was after the random drones. All right, we can do this. I'm getting better at this game, I believe. Actually, I don't know if I am or not, but we'll we'll go with I am, and uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm just gonna hang out up here, covering my back, making sure no no space asteroids sneak up on me. Anyway, you might know the developer of this game. Their little company called Ultimate Play the Game. Which, if that doesn't sound familiar, I mean, we've seen them before. They, they did Night Lore and stuff like that. But if you don't remember from that video, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it there. But if I didn't, they later renamed themselves to Rare. So, hey, if you played Battletoads or Donkey Kong Country or Banjo and Kazooie or I think they made... Did they make Perfect Dark? Was that Rare? Man, I, I'm totally blanking. They might have been. Uh, anyway, Rare is a company that you probably know. And look... This is where they got their start. Well, not their, their absolute start, but hey, this is one of their early games. Good old Jetpack by the ZX, or on the ZX Spectrum. So crazy that, like, so some of the most well-known companies started with games like this. Like, okay, this game is, is not, like, necessarily, like, a bad game for its, like, time. It's actually, like, it's a, it's a decent action game. I could see, like, playing this. Um, back in the day. Can I pick up the fuel, by the way, after I've dropped it? We should try and do that. See if we can, like, double drop the fuel. Probably won't help us, but uh, I'm just curious if you can do that, if you can pick the fuel up after you drop it. But it's interesting, like, where these companies um, got their name. Rare is a really interesting company because it started as a Nintendo company. Oh, well, I guess it started as a ZX Spectrum company, actually, because they made quite a few games on the ZX Spectrum and Commodore and other things. But then, so when they were developing this game, they actually were researching Japanese games, and that is sort of what led them to make this type of game, because they were researching games on the Famicom, and I don't know, I guess they saw, like, platformers and stuff were doing well, and they were they wanted to practice making games for the Famicom, and they, so they had all these plans to, like, be a Nintendo developer, and they eventually panned out, but, you know, this Jetpack here was the first game in the, oh, shoot, Jetman series, and I believe they made a version of Jetman for the NES, but it did not sell very well. Okay, so here's an interesting thing about this game before I keep talking about Rare. When you shoot these things, they respawn. So if they're all bouncing around in an area of the screen that like is really far away from you, it's actually advantageous to stop shooting them and just let them do their thing. 
because when you shoot them, they respawn and they have a chance of coming to an area of the screen where you don't want to see them. So that's kind of like an interesting meta strategy for this game. Oh, God. Um, playing the the little balls against against themselves. Look, so if I don't shoot them, they're all just going to bounce around at the bottom of the screen. And if they come up here, I'll kill them. But otherwise, we'll just let them be. Oh, no, never mind. They're coming for me. They're on. They're wise to me. Okay, we're going to drop this fuel. Can we get it again? No, we can't get it again. Once you drop it, it's like dropped. And you just got to wait. It's funny, like, how slow it falls. Like, I guess it's because space has, like, really light gravity, so it's falling so so lightly. But, like, if I were him, I would be whipping it down at the spaceship, like, Get in there! Hurry up! Do you see all these space balls trying to kill us? Flee! I would just, like, throw the fuel as hard as I could at the rocket ship. Because it doesn't seem like you have to do anything. It's like if the, fu if the fuel falls in the general area of the rocket ship, it fuels itself up. I don't know. I don't know how that works. But yeah, anyway, so Rare started, in the early days at least, they might have started on the ZX Spectrum and other things, but they, they did some stuff for Nintendo. Eventually they got bought by, by Microsoft, and I don't even know like what they, they even make anymore. Um, I think they're still around, like technically, but I think Microsoft forced them to like work on the Kinect. And the Kinect, of course, like Kinect-only games, there's like no really like really good connect only game that you can really probably think of and so you know by being by forcing them to develop only for the connect you're just going to get a bunch of like forgettable games so i don't even know what their most memorable game in like the last 10 years uh was oh that's convenient thanks for dropping fuel right beside me universe got my back this is the best place to stay because you're kind of like walled off from the rest of the world so you just stay in here and make sure that no balls come for you and then you zoom out, get the fuel, and then you get back up here. This is where we're going to hide from the drones in the next level. This is Jay's secret spot. Don't tell the balls about this. Don't tell any of the balls about Jay's secret spot. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the Ego comment, and now we're talking about Jay's secret spot. It's too easy, guys. It's too easy to come up with dirty jokes in this world. Uh, let's Let's not let it happen. <laughs> You know, when I read about this game, and they said, oh yeah, the game is pretty easy, you're just on like a single screen, you have to run around and collect fuel, and then fly to a different part of the, the world or whatever. I was like, oh, that that sounds pretty simple, I'm sure it won't be that hard to figure out. And then, of course, uh, as soon as I started playing and I realized how convoluted the controls for this game were, and like how difficult it was going to be to set up a joystick and stuff, I was like, of course. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like dealing with the Joker. You know, like you read about some of these old retro games, you're like, oh, that doesn't sound very complicated. I'm sure that'll be easy to play slash set up. And then you actually go to play it, and it's like, it's never that simple with the Joker. It's like, it's true, it's never that simple with retro games. It's like, all you have to do is collect fuel, drop it on your ship, and then, of course, the buttons are like A, Q, S, or D goes left, Z, X, capital exclamation point, and Q goes R, right, and like all these like really convoluted things. These were, It seems like the older the game, the more I can be assured, oh God, that I'm going to die, the more I can be assured that something is going to go wrong when I try to, to play it. And so I, no, is that game over? No, no, come on, come on, get in the ship as yes, we pass the drone level. Past the drone level. But the older the game is, the more it can be assured something is going to go wrong when I try to play it. So, like, I used to just, like, literally... Oh, we get a new ship this time. Sweet. Oh, we had the U-1. Now we have the U-2. <laughs> Which is still funny. Oh, we're fighting UFOs. That's cool. But the U-1 is like, you won! You're a winner! The U-2 is like, hey, you win too! You as well! <laughs> I guess the next one's like the U-3 and the U-4. Those get less funny because there's nothing you can come up with for the U3 and the U4. Oh, these things are homing on me. Look at this. Look at this. They want blood. They they want to taste spaceman guts. All right, get away from me. Get away from me. But yeah, so uh, these days, whenever I play an old game, I definitely make sure... Oh, God, stay away from me. Definitely make sure to test it out a little bit more before I actually start recording. And just to make sure that... Um, I'm not going to encounter any, like, catastrophic problems as I play. These things are actually a little easier to deal with. Oh, God. Because at least, like, I know where they're going to go. The thing that made the balls and the bubbles difficult is they kind of, like, bounce around randomly. Like, the asteroids kind of flew in a straight path. Then the, like, little fuzzballs kind of bounced around. 
But what made the balls difficult is they kind of like moved erratically. And then the drones, the drones were kind of like even more complicated because they they seemed like they would kind of stay in one spot. But if I got near, they would kind of home at me. At least these guys are like constant, shoot, constantly coming for me. Oh, I th thought I was dead. I thought I was out of lives there. Oh, God. Oh, God. We're so close to passing this. What is after UFOs? What, what, quick, quick. Come up with predictions. I'm going to predict tiger skulls in space. Or like a predator head or something. Okay, here we go. Get to the ship. Get to the chopper. The space chopper. We did it. We are kings. <laughs> oh, man. Apparently, so... Uh, They've made a whole series of these jetpack games. I keep saying that. Uh, but I think one came out recently for the Xbox Live Arcade back in 2007, I think. Uh, it was Jetpack Refueled. Oh, we're fighting Tetris pieces. Oh, we're dead. It wasn't Tiger Skulls in Space, so that would have been cool. Let's do one more run of this. And then we probably, this game has probably run its course. But yeah, I mean, you know what? This game these days... It's funny because, like, in a way, this game is, like, really dated. And it's like, well, you know, Jetpack had its day. Of course, its sequels wouldn't do that well because it's kind of, like, limited gameplay. Um, but, you know, it actually kind of feels like a casual game these days. So I almost could see, like, if you dressed it up a bit and gave power-ups. Crap. Can't be dying on the first level. If you dressed it up a bit and gave it power-ups, I could see, like, the casual gaming market existing for this thing. So, Yeah. Came out in 2007, a sequel to this, um, Jetpack Refueled, which is like, why do sequels always need to have that like little tagline? It's like, just call it like Jetpack 4. Like, why do you th are you making the game sound that much more badass by being like, you know, Jetpack? Oh, come on. Uh, jetpack, colon, refueled, you know, end of an era. Like, you're trying to make it sound all epic. It's It's a guy floating around in space shooting rainbows trying to collect fuel for a rocket ship um give up on the idea you're gonna make it sound cool and just call it jetpack four or five or whatever the hell it is <laughs> yeah it is kind of interesting though that this game or, or sorry uh, speaking of the uh you know putting games on xbox now so rare which was the company that made this originally although they were called ultimate play the game at the time but it is kind of interesting to think that, like, Rare, they developed this game and others, like Battletoads and stuff for Nintendo. But later on, when the Rare Replay thing came out, which is all their classic games, it didn't come out on Nintendo. It came out on Xbox, because Xbox owns Rare these days. But think about that for a second. It means that all these classic games that we grew up playing on Nintendo, now you they've re-released them, but they've re-released them on Xbox, which is kind of a weird thought when you think about it. It's like... Huh, like they all just kind of transferred to a different system. And when you think about it, I mean, the fact that they were on Nintendo generally, not really on too many other systems itself, was a little arbitrary. Oh, God. Stay away from me, Blue Ball. Oh, we're doing horrible in this last run. Uh, we may have one more run in us, maybe to try and sort this out, but we'll see. I, I will start wrapping up in a second. But yeah, it is kinda, it's kind of arbitrary, like what what system a lot of games end up on. It's funny, too, like when you think about it, like, video game consoles are, like, the only thing I can think of where, like, there's there's a lot of control put into, like, who's allowed to put stuff out on these systems, and, like, nobody really complains about it. Like, imagine if, when VCRs were invented, if Sony had said, only we are allowed to make tapes and nobody else can if you want to if you want to put tapes out on our vcr you have to be a third party film developer and you have to get special rights from us and think about that for a sec like why is it why is it acceptable to us that a company can put out a piece of technology like hardware and all of a sudden they can say who's allowed to make software for it like that's not true for almost anything else like even apple Right. Like even Apple thinking about their computer, not their phones, because their phones came out after, you know, now they have like the walled garden of the app, app store or whatever. But even Apple, like they make they control their hardware and software a lot. But even like Mac computers, anyone can design a, a piece of software for Mac and they can release it. And Apple can't do anything to stop it unless they're like ripping them off or something. But yeah, like anyone could make tapes. Anyone could do whatever they want. Right. Like. Just because you make the technology doesn't give you a right to control what's on it, except video game consoles, which is actually like really weird. I know there's a lot of history behind it, and there's definitely reasons why that's the case. Um, 
I'm not saying we should totally abandon it, but when you think about it, it's kind of it's kind of unusual, kind of unusual. Anyway, I feel like we've we've kind of you know we stuck with the story of this guy kind of like flying around in space. Like we still don't know what his ultimate end is. I think he is enjoying his himself in space. He just wants to like go out and shoot stuff. He has no interest in getting home. It's so like I don't know who's leaving him fuel in briefcases. By the way, I guess they're barrels on their side, but they look like briefcases. I don't know who's leaving him fuel, but clearly he could go home right now. He could go home. In space, there's no such thing as friction. So you get your spaceship going near the, the speed of light and you just let it go and it will literally coast its way back to Earth, uh, more or less. But he has no interest in that. He's not trying to get home, guys. He's trying to kill as much things in space as he can. This is just maybe this is just a guy at a shooting range. It's like this is what you do in the future. It's not laser tag. It's like space tag, where you shoot all sorts of like weird objects in space, and this is how you get your jollies. And um, you know, he wants to be here. He's he's not some poor astronaut lost in space. He paid good money to come and kill uh, space lint and collect random gems for some extra points. So. <laughs> Well, what can we what can we say about uh, Jetpack here? So Jetpack is one of the games in the book, 1001 Games You Must Play Before You Die. And let's talk about that for a second. Is this a game that you must play before you die? Um, I think there's a very obvious answer to this, and the answer is no. Um, it's no because, I mean, look at it. It's, it's not that complicated a game. I've been playing it for, what, like 20 minutes now? And uh, we're already kind of reaching a point where, like, we've had some good conversation, and we've talked about some funny things. But, you know, like, the gameplay elements are just looping over and over and over again. And this is really a game that, like, once you get the hang of it, like, eventually you'll have an easy time beating it. I've really kind of fallen into a pattern here where I'm kind of hovering around the top of the screen up in this area. And I'm only going down when it's required. And going down is actually really dangerous. But um, you do it when you have to. So, boom, just pass another level. Um, I... I don't even know like where I would consider this in terms of gaming history because it's it's not like some games when I, I play them they might be dated and I might say you know there's no reason to necessarily play this game but like I appreciate where it lands in terms of its in, its later influences and stuff I mean this was like an early game by Rare but other than that like I'm not seeing too many like really you know unique things I, that didn't exist in other games of this era so it's hard for me to necessarily say why this was a game that the, the writers of the book thought you needed to play. I mean, they don't say much about it in the book. So, you know, I mean, the pros are like it's once you once you do get used to the controls, it's not that that bad of a, of a game. And it is kind of fun to like swoop in here. Oh, God. Oh, man, I can't believe I survived there and like get the fuel. And like like I am I am kind of enjoying myself on some level here, even though it looks like really basic. The gameplay, there is a bit of like, you know, uh there's a bit of excitement when you have to swoop down and get the fuel and like you're kind of just waiting like come on come on like you got a clock going because the longer you're here the more likely you are to die um it seems like you want to get out of these levels as quickly as you can and when you kill things you have no idea where they'll spawn so like yeah it's it's not a bad game on in, in those ways but like where it's limited is like you know there's only really like one type of level there's no power-ups the enemies i mean it's nice that there's variety of enemies but I mean, staying up here where I am right now in Jay's secret spots, it's essentially protected from almost every type of enemy. Even the enemies that like crap, <laughs> that do that kill you. Even the enemies that, that hone in on you, like those UFO ships or the drones, don't seem to be able to get you right there. So it's like, it's kind of like a safe spot in the level. I don't know. It actually kind of reminds me of Destiny, how in like Destiny, there's always like a secret spot for like every boss battle that you could hide and you could beat a boss on the hardest difficulty all by yourself. It's actually, I kind of actually like that because it felt like you were gaming the game. So maybe I'm getting like some small tidbit of that with this little secret spot up here. I don't know. But you know, like ultimately... As I say, is this a game you must play before you die? I don't think so, because I think if you didn't play this game, I don't think much would be lost. This isn't to say that if you're a fan of ZX Spectrum games, or, yeah, wait, ZX Spectrum games, let's do it right. Let's start doing it right. Correct me, guys. Correct me if I'm doing it wrong in the comments below. But uh, if you are a fan of ZX Spectrum games, this might be a game you want to check out, because, you know, as far as ZX Spectrum games go, it seems it seems like not bad. It seems like a solid 
solid kind of action game. But in terms of like the grand scheme of things, if you've never played this, I wouldn't go out of your way to play it. So I would give this recommend this game kind of like a, a nah, like a it's a game you could probably skip recommendation. Um, but again, not to say it's not a good game, but just you know when you put it in context of what is this game, it's not something you must play. And so that's my opinion. I don't know. You're free to disagree with me. Maybe I'm missing some core cool element of the game. You can go, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Um, since we've made it to the UFO ships, I feel like we can't just give up just yet. So let's go ahead and keep going for just a bit here. And let's see if we can get to the next stage or two. I feel like with these UFO ships, it's actually better to like just be constantly killing them and don't let them build up in any like one spot. Maybe that's the strategy I'll try here. Oh God. Although of course that makes them spawn randomly in the map and increases the likelihood that one will spawn literally right in front of you. That's actually one thing I wish they did not allow in this game, enemies to spawn literally right on top of you. They should spawn a little far away from you just to be fair, like give you a shot, you know? Okay, here we go. Yeah, suckers. Suck ass. <laughs> so the trick is to like kind of like lure them all to one side of the platform where they they can't get up to you and then when you're ready you just kind of like go for it and you just do it quick and there's like nothing they can do so these ufos are actually not hard um, actually you know what i will do um i'll have a, I'll have a little tidbit at the very end of this video and you can see how far i got because this might take a little while guys if you've been enjoying this video if you enjoyed checking out jetpack with me today go ahead and give the video a good old like a good and go ahead and give the channel a good old subscribe i am on a quest to play through the book 1001 games you must play before you die and so every couple of days i play a couple of games so if you subscribe you won't miss out on the new entries for that otherwise if you find yourself lost in space oh we're dead oh we didn't even get far <laughs> if you find yourself lost in space, for the love of God, try to get home. Don't just accept it and, and kill all the random stuff you can find. Um, otherwise, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon. All right, guys. Peace. I got to say the one thing I am disappointed about with this game is that he's not really shooting rainbows. In that loading screen, they showed him shooting a full-on rainbow. And now he's like limited to purple, white, and cyan. Again, like what a terrible combination of gross looking colors. But man, I want to be shooting greens and reds and yellows. I want the full rainbow, man. I wanted to feel like a Care Bear in space, but instead they got me feeling like, you know, some, some half-confident astronaut dude who's only in it to shoot up asteroids and fuel his little rocket. And I just got to say, I'm a little disappointed here.